Hello, fifth graders, and happy Tuesday. Today, we're going to spend some time reviewing for your checkpoint tomorrow. I know that you're going to crush it. Work hard, show all of your work, and make sure your paper looks like mine. I know you're going to do a great job, and so does Mr. Smiles. Let's dive right in. First, we're going to multiply 5 6 times 5. Remember, when I multiply a fraction times a whole number, I can multiply the numerator times the whole number. What's 5 times 5? It's 25. The denominator stays the same, so I have 25 over 6. Now I need to change that into a mixed number. What operation would I use to change 25 sixths into a mixed number? I would divide 25 divided by 6. How many times does 6 go into 25? 6 goes into 25 four times. What's 4 times 6? It's 24. When I subtract 25 minus 24, how many do I have left over? 1. So, how do I write that as a mixed number? Well, I have 4 wholes with 1 6 left over. 5 6 times 5 is 4 and 1 6. Let's look at number 2. What multiplication sentence is shown by the model? Remember, multiplication is putting together equal groups. So, first, let's think. What fraction is shown by each group? One half is shown by each group. How many groups of one half are there? There are four groups. So my multiplication problem is one half times four. Now let's multiply. What's one half times four? Write your answer as an improper fraction. One half times four is four over two. One times four is four, and the denominator stays the same. Now I can divide to change it into a whole number or a mixed number. What's 4 divided by 2? It's 2. The answer is 2. Now let's multiply decimals. What's 3 tenths times 3 tenths? First, I need to count how many digits are behind the decimal. How many digits are behind the decimal in both factors? Well, there's 1, 2 digits behind the decimal. Now I can multiply like there's no decimal there. What's 3 times 3? It's 9. Where would I place the decimal to end in the hundredths place so that there are two digits behind the decimal? I need to go 1, 2 over. So my answer is 0 and 9 hundredths. Now let's look at number 4. One third of the students in a class finish their exit ticket. One half of that group of students scored a 100%. What fraction of the class scored 100% on their exit ticket? Well, I'm finding a fraction of a fraction, so what operation should I use? I need to multiply one third times one half. What's one third times one half? Well, one times one is one, and three times two is six, so one sixth of the class scored a 100% on their exit ticket. There are 24 candies in a bag. Two-thirds of the candies are chocolate. How many candies are chocolate? Well, how can I find a fraction of a group? What operation should I use? I need to multiply two-thirds times 24. What's two-thirds times 24 written as an improper fraction? Well, 24 times 2 is 48. So I have 48 over 3. Now I can divide to change that into a whole number or a mixed number. What's 48 divided by 3? Well, 3 goes into 4 one time, and 3 goes into 18 six times. So my answer is 16. 16 of the candies are chocolate. How many candies are not chocolate? Well, I know that there are 24 total candies, and 16 of them are chocolate, what operation could I use to find how many are left that are not chocolate? I could subtract 24 minus 16. What's 24 minus 16? Well, 14 minus 6 is 8, 1 minus 1 is 0, so the answer is 8 candies are not chocolate. Let's look at number 6. Eric split two pizzas across six boxes. How many pizzas went in each box? Well, first, let's think. What's being split up in this problem? Two pizzas are being split up. 
So what division sentence could I use? I could use 2 divided by 6. How could I write 2 divided by 6 as a fraction? I could write it as 2 6. Now, I don't see my answer choice there, so I need to simplify. What's the largest number that goes into both 2 and 6? It's 2. When I simplify 2 6, what's the result? It's 1 third. The correct answer to this problem is A. Now it's time for fluency. Go ahead and solve the problems on page 2 of your packet. When you're finished, raise your hand so that Ms. Tramontosi can check. Let's dive into our review for today. The first thing we talked about in this unit was fractions as division. Remember that a fraction can be written as a division problem. And a division problem can be written as a fraction. We write that problem as numerator divided by denominator. Let's try a few. Write 3 divided by 7 as a fraction. Well, that would be 3 sevenths. Write 5 divided by 2 as a fraction. That would be 5 halves. Write 3 halves as a division problem. Well, that's 3, numerator, divided by 2, denominator. Let's look down. Which statement is not true? 3 divided by 4 is 3 fourths. 7 divided by 2, that's not 2 sevenths. That looks like a correct answer, but let's check C and D. 2 ninths is the same as 2 divided by 9, and 5 fourths is the same as 5 divided by 4. So the correct answer is B. B is not true. Let's look at the middle problem. George split 3 gallons of lemonade across 6 containers. How many gallons were in each container? Well, here, I need to divide. What's being split up? Three gallons are being split up. What division problem could I use? Since I'm splitting three up, that's my dividend, so I'm going to divide three across six containers. When I divide three divided by six, what's the result? It's three six when I write it as a fraction. That answer isn't there, so I need to simplify. What's the largest number that goes into both 3 and 6? It's 3. When I simplify 3 6, what's the result? It's 1 half. Correct answer is B. Now you try one. Alex split 8 gallons of juice across 10 containers. How many gallons were in each container? Go ahead and solve that problem now. The correct answer is D, 4 fifths. 8 gallons are split across 10 containers, so it's 8 divided by 10. That makes 8 tenths. When I simplify, the result is 4 fifths. Next, we talked about multiplying fractions by whole numbers. To multiply fractions by whole numbers, multiply the numerator by the whole number. The denominator stays the same because I'm not changing the number of pieces each hole is cut into. Let's look at a model. What multiplication problem is shown by this model? Well, remember, when we multiply, we put together equal groups. What fraction is represented by each group? Well, there's one out of one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. How many groups of one, six are there? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What's 1 6 times 5? It's 5 6. 5 times 1 is 5, and the denominator stays the same. Let's do another example. What is 3 7 times 5? What is 3 7 times 5 written as an improper fraction? It's 15 7. The next thing I need to do is change that into a mixed number. Go ahead and divide 15 divided by 7 and write it as a mixed number. The correct answer is 2 and 1 seventh. Now you try one. What is 2 thirds times 4? Write your answer as a mixed number. The correct answer is 2 and 2 thirds. 
2 thirds times 4 is 8 thirds. When I divide to change it to a mixed number, I get 2 and 2 thirds. We also talked about how to find fractions of whole numbers. To find a fraction of a whole number, multiply the fraction by the number. Let's look at some examples. 16 students tried out for the volleyball team. Three-fourths of the students made the team. How many students made the team? Well, I need to find three-fourths of 16 or three-fourths times 16. What's three-fourths times 16 written as an improper fraction? Well, 3 times 16 is 48 over 4. Now I need to divide. 48 divided by 4. When I do that, what's the resulting whole number? 4 goes into 48 12 times. So, 12 students made the team. How many students didn't make the team? If 16 tried out and 12 made the team, what operation should I use to find how many students didn't make the team? I should subtract. 6 minus 2 is 4, and that's my answer. 1 minus 1 is 0. Four students didn't make the team. Let's look at another problem. There are 35 pieces of chocolate in a bag. Four-fifths of the chocolates are milk chocolate, and the rest are dark chocolate. How many chocolates are milk chocolate, and how many are dark chocolate? I know four-fifths of the chocolates are milk chocolate, so I can multiply four-fifths times 35 to find the number of milk chocolate candies. Go ahead and do that now. What's four-fifths times 35? Write your answer as a whole number. The correct answer is 28. Four-fifths times 35 is 28. Now I need to find how many are dark chocolate. What operation should I use? I need to subtract 35, the total, minus 28, the number that are milk chocolate. Do that now. What's 35 minus 28? Well, when I subtract, I get 7. Now you try one on your own. There are 18 marbles in a bag. Four-ninths of the marbles are green. How many marbles are green and how many marbles are not green? Answer that question now. Eight marbles are green. Four ninths times 18 is 72 over nine or eight. 10 marbles are not green. If I subtract the total 18 minus eight, I can see that 10 marbles are not green. We also talked about multiplying fractions by fractions. To multiply a fraction by a fraction, first multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. We can multiply straight across. What's one-third times one-fourth? It's one-twelfth. One times one is one, and three times four is twelve. What's two-fifths times three-fifths? Well, 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times 5 is 25. What's 2 thirds times 4 sevenths? It's 8 over 21. We can find fractions of fractions by multiplying. Let's look at some examples. One fourth of the students in a marching band play the drums. Three fifths of the students that play the drums play the snare drum. What fraction of the marching band plays the snare drum? So I need to find three-fifths of one-fourth, or three-fifths times one-fourth. What's three-fifths times one-fourth? Well, three times one is three, and five times four is twenty. The answer is three-twentieths. Let's look at another example. James had three-fifths of a pizza left after dinner. He ate one-fourth of the remaining pizza for lunch the next day. What fraction of the original pizza did James eat for lunch? So here I need to find one-fourth of three-fifths, or one-fourth times three-fifths. What's one-fourth times three-fifths? It's three over twenty. Now you answer a question. Two-thirds of the students in class are girls. One-third of the girls are wearing blue. What fraction of the class is made up of girls wearing blue? Answer that question now. 
The correct answer is two ninths. I'm finding one third of two thirds, or one third times two thirds. When I answer that question, I get two ninths. We also talked about multiplying decimals. Remember, when you multiply decimals, count the total number of digits behind the decimal place. Multiply as if there's no decimal. And then place the same number of digits behind the decimal point to ensure you are ending in the correct place value. Let's do some examples. First, let's multiply 4 and 6 tenths times 2. How many digits will be behind the decimal place in my answer? 1 will. Now I can multiply like normal. What's 46 times 2? Well, 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so it's 92. Which one of these shows how I should place the decimal? I would place it between the 9 and the 2. I need my answer to end in the tenths place, so one digit needs to be behind the decimal. Let's look at another problem. 12 and 92 hundredths times 3. How many digits need to be behind the decimal? 1, 2. Now solve the problem. Write your answer as the final decimal product. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8, and 3 times 1 is 3. So, when I place 1, 2 numbers behind the decimal, the answer is 38 and 76 hundredths. My answer had to end in the hundredths place. Now you try one on your own. A bag of hot chips costs $3.97. Alan buys six bags. How much does he spend? Go ahead and solve that problem now. The correct answer is $23.82. We also talked about multiplying decimals times decimals. Let's do some examples. One-tenth times six-tenths. Remember, when I multiply tenths times tenths, I would get hundredths. The easiest way to show this is by counting the number of digits behind the decimal. There's one, two behind the decimal. Then I can multiply like normal. What's six times one? It's six. How would I place the decimal to make sure my answer is in the hundredths place, that there are two digits behind the decimal point? I would have to write zero and six hundredths. Now you try one. What's three tenths times seven tenths? First, how many digits will go behind the decimal? There's one, two. What's three times seven? It's 21. Where would I place the decimal? I would need to make it 21 hundredths. Now you solve one on your own. What's nine tenths times seven tenths? The answer is 63 hundredths. We also can multiply hundredths times tenths. The result would be thousands. So let's multiply. What's 1 and 25 hundredths times 4 tenths? Go ahead and do that now. First, how many digits will be behind the decimal? There will be 1, 2, 3. Now, multiply 125 times 4. I would get 500. I need to place 3 digits behind the decimal, so I'm going to write... 500 thousands. Now you try one. What's 3 and 82 hundredths times 5 tenths? Go ahead and solve that problem now. There are three digits behind the decimal. The correct answer is 1 and 910 thousandths. Let's look at one more. Which of the following would result in 4 and 75 hundredths? So which of the following would have an answer in the hundredths place, or two digits behind the decimal? Pick your answer now. The correct answer is C. There's one, two digits behind the decimal point. You've done a great job with this video. Now it's time to go to IXLPracticeM.10. I know you're going to crush it.